So read the question. First thing we always want to do. So what it says here, my party people, is this. How much did Patricia initially invest in the account? Everybody, when we read that, how much did Patricia initially invest in the account? What's a word that you associate with initially? Right, what was there in the beginning? What was there at first? What was there before all the action, right? So if we can imagine that, even if we don't know what the exact math is yet, because if all you read was the question, we don't know what the exact math is yet. But if you read the question, you can imagine what's going on. How much did Patricia initially invest in the account? It sounds like Patricia made an investment. We want to know what that beginning investment was. Does that make sense so far? Even if we haven't gotten to the math yet, does that make sense so far? We want what she initially put into the account, the beginning amount. And before we continue, one of the main frustrations that so many people have with the ASVAB is not knowing what to study and how to study to begin with. So if you're one of those people that can do a good job if everything's lined up for you, then go ahead and join our program. We have all the classes, all the recordings, all the courses with practice questions, with videos, and you can text me all the way up until you pass. So that's how it works. It's very simple, straightforward, and it gets you to the score and the job you want. Check out the link in the description of this video to learn more and sign up now. Great. Great. So we're on our way to success there. Again, the three steps, you want to take these very slow and very seriously as you start off with your practice. Eventually, you'll be flying through it. In real time, I would take less than three seconds on that first part. Step two, now we're going to look at the information to see what's going on to see if we can tell what kind of math is going on here. So once I read this, after investing some money into a simple interest savings account, right there, everyone, is that a very ultra exclusive specific math terminology here or math term? Simple interest? Yes, it is. Yes, it absolutely is. Simple interest, just like area of a rectangle or volume of the shape, you know, or distance rate time. They have formulas. So does simple interest. There are two formulas you want to know for simple interest. And the first one is pretty self-explanatory, but I do want to say it regardless. So here's the two formulas. Number one, the first formula, and again, we're talking simple interest. Let me zoom in here. So for simple interest, let me make sure that's straight. Do, 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 do. Your first formula is going to be this. Your total amount is going to be equal to your principal, which is the initial amount. And now actually, yeah, we, we could say I for initial, but I could say P for principal. Principal, again, is your initial amount. And I'll go ahead and write that down for you. It's your principal plus your interest. Okay? And your principal, again, is the beginning amount. So that's number one. This formula is, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. When we're talking about investing the final amount in the account, is going to be what you initially put in plus the interest that you earned. You add those two things together, that's your total amount in the account. In this problem, that's not going to be very necessary to use, but in other problems it could be, especially with questions that ask you, what's the final amount? Next, number two, this is the formula that we're going to use specifically in this question. The, this formula, who knows it? It's pretty much four letters in the short form. Who knows what the simple interest formula is? I equals what? Danielle, appreciate you. I equals PRT. I equals PERT or I equals PRT. Pretty much what that stands for is this. So I equals PRT. Here's what all of this stands for. This stands for your interest. And again, this is for simple interest. The interest that you earned is equal to the principal times your rate, which is your interest rate, times time. 
So I'll give you a second to write that down. Again, you have two formulas here. The first one being pretty self-explanatory to get the total amount. The total is just the beginning amount plus the interest. Put that together, that's the total amount. But number two, the interest that you earned in simple interest is gonna be a product multiplication of the principal times the rate times the time, all laid out right here. So once you have that written down, type ready in the chat box, because we're gonna go ahead and show you once you know the formula, this is actually pretty straightforward, but you gotta know the formula. If you don't know the formula, you put yourself at a little bit of a disadvantage. So take a moment, guys. Take a moment, take a screenshot, or um, you know, go ahead and write it down if you're a quick writer. Great question, Kenny. So everybody who is done writing or is about to be done writing, Kenny's question was an interesting one. Can you do this problem with y equals mx plus b? You might think that. You might think that. You know, it might be very tempting to think that, but the answer is no. For the reason being that this rate that we're talking about is not a it's not a physical or a tangible rate, it's a percentage rate. So typically when we talk about rates, we're talking about hey, we have this beginning amount, we have this rate going on, and then we have a final amount. Which again, it might seem like that's what's going on, but when it comes to percentages, we specifically go with this. I equals PRT. Okay? And so essentially that was a long-winded way of saying, yes, you technically could use y equals mx plus b, technically, but you have to be very careful with knowing what goes where, or else you can go wrong really fast. So again, when you're talking about interest, simple interest, specifically go with this. Cool. So let's check this out here, my party people. So here we go. Interest equals principal times rate times time. Knowing what we know so far, let's see if we can pull the information into the right places. So here we go. It says, hey, after investing some money into a simple interest savings account that earns 6% per year, let's highlight that one right there. Everybody, what's that going to be? 6% per year, what is that going to be? That's the rate. That is our interest rate. Absolutely. Let me actually do ourselves a favor here. Let me go ahead and take this and move it on over here. But yeah, our rate is going to be 6%. For sure. Next, over 18 years. Everybody, which one does that sound like? The interest, the principal, the time? 18 years. What does that sound like? Sounds like time. I agree. I agree. Let me actually grab a different color there. Let's grab green. 18 years. That is the time. All right, great. And then it says, hey, uh, after all this time, after the 18 years, Patricia saw a gain of $28,080 in the account. Okay, everybody, what's the $28,080 going to be? Is that the principal or is that the interest? Which one is that going to be? Yeah, that's going to be interest. Because notice that if it was the principal, that would be what happened at the beginning. And that's actually what we're looking for. What this gives us, a gain of $28,080, that's the interest that you earned. That's what you earned on the account. Before I continue, is that making sense to all my party people out there in terms of understanding the formula and how to pick apart the information to get to what you need? All right, so guess what everybody? When it comes to problems that specifically use formulas, one of the main advantages that you get is once you have set up your formula correctly, you're good, absolutely good. You're ready to tackle this. You're ready to do the right, you know, make the right moves and get the right answers. So with that said, here we go. So let's solve this. 28,080 equals my principal times everybody. What do we always have to do when we have a percent included in an equation? Got to convert it. 6%. Turn that into a decimal. What is that going to be? 
0 0.06, that is correct. 0 0.06, again, to turn a decimal or a percent into a decimal, we're going to move that decimal place two times to the left. So if it starts here, we'll go 1, 2, and so that'll be 0 0.06 right there, as you see. And then lastly, we have the 18 years. So we'll go ahead and just bring that 18 down nice and easy. Great. All right. Boom. So what do we do next? Well, we're going to solve this thing. It looks like on the right side, we have 0 0.06 times 18. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of break that down for ourselves. What is a six, 0 0.06 times 18? What is that going to be? Let's find out right over here. And it's me again, your coach Anderson. Look, you're doing these problems right here on YouTube, but I want you to join me for a live class that's free once a week. I do this because I want to help other people succeed just like you. So if you want to raise your score, sign up for my free classes once a week. They're hosted on Zoom. And on top of that, you'll get my free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. So there's no reason not to sign up. So go ahead, get off your butt, sign up here, the link there, somewhere over here, figure it out, but sign up and I'll see you in the next class, my ASVAB party people. Let's get back to the problem. So here we go, we have eight times six, that's gonna be 48. Then we have ourselves one times six, which is six. Carry the four, that's gonna be a 10. Everybody, at the end of the day, what do we do with that decimal, or the total number of decimals? Because we kind of ignored that in the beginning. What do we do with those decimals again, just as a refresher? Yeah, we're gonna bring them back. So if we see that here, we have none here. So none right here. And then one, two here. So we have a total of two decimals that we're gonna bring back, and that's gonna be one, two. 1.08 is that number right there. So if I bring this back, we have 28,080 equals 1.08 times P. I'll let you guys take it in for a moment. Again, all we did, all we did was we combined the 0 0.06 times 18 and we made that 1.08. So the last thing we're gonna do here, last thing we're gonna do, take the 1.08, we're gonna divide that on both sides. Once we divide it on both sides, boom, we get that P by itself, that principal amount, the beginning amount, we'll get that by itself and we'll be good. So with that, let's divide it. Divide by 1.08, divide by 1.08. Sweet. Now that we're here, this is gonna be a really good time for me to mention how to divide by a decimal. Is anybody here looking at this right now? This part right there. Anybody looking at this and saying, how am I supposed to divide that? Anybody here freaking out just a little bit? Don't worry, it's common. Don't worry. And I have a nice strategy for you. Here's the thing. Everybody has, anybody here ever heard of the statement um, with fractions? Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Yeah, okay, cool. So I got y'all. Let me show you a nice little trick, which isn't really a trick, it's just a lot, it, it's formalities. But what we can do here is this. Let me just make this a little smaller so I can do this right here at the bottom. So what we can do is if we have 28,080 divided by 1.08, we can go ahead and take the decimals and we can move them the same number of times in the same direction. All this is, is like saying, hey, with fractions, if I wanted to multiply the top and the bottom by 10, I could. If I wanted to multiply the top and the bottom by 100, I could, it'll keep the fraction the same. If you wanna move the decimal to the right for both of them, one time each, perfectly okay. Moving the decimal over to the right one time is the same as multiplying by 10. So it's all good, it's all good. I'm gonna move this over one, two times to the right, right over here, and I'll do that same thing here. One, two times to the right, and what you'll see is if I fill in those gaps with a zero, you'll see that this is actually gonna be the same thing as two, eight, zero, eight, zero, 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 divided by 108. Now, even though that is a massively larger number up top, you're now dividing by a whole number and this makes it that much more possible. How do I know this? 
Well, because now you can turn this, I'm going to do this over here, you can now turn this into a long division problem. 108 divided into 2808000, excuse me, 123, before I make a mistake. And now we can go ahead and get that done. So take a quick screenshot of this side before I continue, because now I'm actually going to do the math right above me. Five, four, three, two, and one. I have so many glasses here, I'm having trouble <laughs> picking one to wear. But with that, let's go ahead and try this out. So first things first, my party people, let's ask ourselves, how many times does 108 go into two? Zero, okay? How many times does 108 go into 28? Zero. How many times does 108 go into 280? Two times. So what I'll do is I'll put a two right up there. And everybody, what's 108 times two? 216. So what I will subtract is 216. Okay, great. 280 minus 216, what's that gonna be, everybody? Because we have zero minus six, not gonna work. So 80 minus 16, what's that gonna be? 64, that's right. Okay, cool, so we have our 64 right over here. Before I continue, do any of these answers start with a two? Because like if I have the two there, do any of these answers start with a two or not with a two? Well, they are start. They all start with a two. Every single one of them. So that's actually a bad question to ask. We're not going to be able to make much progress on that. Oh, I won't let me just grab one letter or one number. So I'll just show you that all of them start with two. So there's nothing to eliminate. However, the next number six, six, five, and six. Let's see what we got going on. I don't want to do any more work than I have to. So with that. Let's bring down the zero, or that eight, excuse me, and let's see what we got. Everybody, how many times does 108 go into 648? Oh, six exact times? Okay, cool, so let me ask you guys how you did that. Oh wait, I know, mental math. I see the majority of y'all who have been in my program answer that very quickly. Because what you can tell is if you wanna go from 108 to 648, well maybe 100 times six gets you 600, but does the eight times six give you 48? Yeah, it does. So what that means is with some mental math really quick, 108 times six, it is exactly 648, putting yourself in a really good position here. Bam, six, subtract 648. That creates a clean zero there. And guess what happens? This one, two, three zeros, that's gonna be right here. One, two, three. Your answer is going to be $26,000 is what was initially invested into the account. And boom, your answer is A. Right away. My party people, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you can see all the updates that we come out with so you can keep improving. So don't wait, subscribe now. And then while you wait for the next video, look here or there to see a related video that's gonna help you improve even more. Let's keep raising that score and let's get the job we want. I'll see you soon.